Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now today I want to talk a little bit about uh, electric vehicles, electric scooters, electric bikes, because I don't feature quite a lot of them on the channel and that's for a very good reason. Uh, I'm pretty passionate about uh, motorcycles in general, internal combustion engine, old vehicles, like for example I rode my 31 year old Transalp here which has a carbureted V-twin 600cc engine and uses about double the fuel it should be using. Basically it just spits out unburned fuel out of the exhaust, which is not very good for the environment. I know that, but it still makes me happy to hear all those pops and bangs and all that mechanical stuff going on. And so I don't view electric vehicles as something for the passionate rider, the person who likes to ride, who likes to hear the engine growl. Uh, but as a means of getting around the city in an economical and environmentally friendly way and a quick way and a cheap way, electric vehicles are starting to present a pretty good uh, alternative to say your buses, your subway, your personal cars, stuff like that, especially electric scooters. And that's why today I have, uh, in the past, I have reviewed the SIM EX Pro. You can check out the video up here. Uh, but that's more towards the professional, towards the delivery person, towards the restaurant. That's geared for delivery work. What about the normal person who just goes to the office and comes back home? Maybe he doesn't want to carry 45 kilograms of stuff with him. Well, today we are going to look at the Daytona Edison 50, an electric scooter from a Chinese manufacturer that's, that comes in at a staggeringly low price of 2300 euros, all in, and it presents a pretty good alternative to your ride-sharing services, your Ubers, your personal car, maybe a personal motorcycle. It's a cheap way to get around the city quickly and efficiently. So today we're going to take a look at it as we usually do from front wheel to back wheel and let's get straight into it with the front end. All right, so starting up front, we have pretty tiny dinky 10 inch wheels, both in the front and in the rear. We have a full array of LED lights that's including LED turn signals, LED low beams, LED high beams, passing light and a bunch of uh, two strips of LED daytime running lights. The suspension is nothing to write home about. Actually, you can see it's everything is made to, down to a cost. And uh, this is not something special in terms of passionate vehicles. Uh, this is just a means of transport. That's it. That's why you can see a fork. That's basically the fork tube is barely bigger than my hand is. That's why you see the small tires. We do have a front brake disc, which is a 180 millimeter brake disc with a single piston caliper up front. Now that may not seem a lot, but you do have to remember this tiny little scooter weighs in at just 72 kilograms curb weight. That's all in ready to ride with the battery in it, 72 kilograms. That's, if you thought the Sim Mio was a light scooter, that one, that scooter is almost 30 kilograms heavier than this is. Moving around to the cockpit and dashboard area, we have our mode switch. It has three riding modes, mode one, mode two, and mode three. Basically, this controls how aggressive the acceleration is. So we have our hazard lights. We also have a nice ticking noise for the hazard lights and for the turn signals. Uh, we, also have, we also have an engine start button. Uh, that's because when you turn it on, it goes through, it cycles through its dash and you can see here there's a P, a red P. You have to hold down this button for about two seconds and now it says ready. So now it's ready to ride. On the left hand side we have a horn button. Pretty nice and uh, loud horn because this is an electric scooter and doesn't make any noise. You do, you do need a proper horn. Uh, our regular turn signals, left and right. Center to cancel, we have our passing light and our high and low beams. In terms of dashboard, we have our mode indicator. It shows 
which mode we are currently in. We have an odometer, we have an amp meter that basically shows how much power we're drawing out of the battery. We have our speed indicator and our battery meter. Unfortunately, we don't have a range estimate, but if you get to know the scooter, you're gonna pretty know how much range you still have on the battery. Further down, we have our ignition key, which is one of the cutest and stubbiest little keys that you have I have ever seen on a scooter. That's pretty much your key for the scooter. And it basically goes into the ignition and it controls the regular stuff. You, to the right, you turn the scooter on. Central is the off position. If we push it to the left, we open the seat. And if we turn the handlebars to the left and push it in, we lock our handlebars. We also have a luggage hook. This is where you can put a backpack or bag or something on the flat floor and you can uh, secure it on this luggage hook. And we also have a pretty decently sized cubby hole. And it actually fits something like a six inch phone. It feels, it fits really nicely in there. Now coming around to the floor area, we have a flat floor, as I said before, and also we have a charging port for the scooter. That's in case you wanna charge the scooter without taking the battery out. The scooter does come with its own charger. And uh, if you live like not in an apartment building, like in a house with a yard, you can charge your scooter outside in the yard, just plug it in right here and you don't have to fuss around with taking the battery out. That's located here under the seat. Moving around to the back, we have the same tire size as we have up in the front, a 10 inch wheel. It's, I don't know, about a 90 millimeter wide wheel. It says 3.00 and uh, the width. We have very good uh, protection against water, against mud if it's raining outside. We have LED turn signal indicators, an LED rear light, both position light and brake light. We have a drum brake in the back and we also have our hub motor, which is a Bosch electric hub motor that's rated for 1.2 kilowatts or 1200 watts of power. Coming around to the seat, if we open it up, we see we have a decently sized storage area. We have our charger, which comes in this nice, which comes in this nice little box. Let's open it up and see how the charger looks. You have this kind of charger. It's a SAUS. Let's see how much. It's an output of 71 volts and four amp hours. That's the charger basically. And this is where it plugs in to the scooter. Also, we have a decently sized storage area. You won't fit your helmet in any way, shape or form, but you can put a couple of things down here. Uh, I don't think a laptop will fit. Maybe something, maybe something like a small Ultrabook. But this we, here we have an off on switch. And if we pull out this piece, this black velvety stuff, we expose the battery cover. Now we open this up like this and we can see our battery in all its glory. Uh, you can take it out and recharge it in your house. You basically just unplug the main wire, pull it to the side and just take out the battery just like that. It's a nine kilogram battery. You also have a meter here that can show you if you press the button how much charge is left in it. And when you're done charging it in the morning, just plug it in and you're off to the races. And that is pretty much it for the Edison 50. This is a small little scooter. It's a cheap way to get around the city. It's not something you're gonna take to a bike meet and everybody go like, wow, what is that? But if you wanna get to work cheaply and quickly, this is a very good option. Also, one more thing. This is a very approachable scooter for just about anyone because this is so light, so low and so small that even a child could operate it. I mean, I'm 175 centimeters tall and not only can I flat foot the scooter, 
I, I have a bend in my knee. But then again, when I'm on the go, it's a very comfortable riding position. I have plenty of leg room. The seat is nice and big. You do have passenger foot pegs. We have them right here. You press this button here and they come out. They're spring loaded. But honestly, I have no idea where a passenger would sit. Let me just put it like this. I have no idea where a passenger would sit behind me. Maybe on the luggage rack, I don't know. But you have the option. If you scoot up forward, you can take your lady friend to work with you or maybe your kid to school. But that's enough blabbering. Let's turn it on. And let's see how it rides. Come on. Alrighty, riding the Daytona Edison 50. <laughs> the little 2000 euro electric scooter. Now, in terms of battery range, it's rated for about 50 kilometers of range. The battery is a 24 amp hour, 60 volt battery. I don't know exactly who makes it. Usually Panasonic is the supplier for all these Chinese companies, but don't quote me on that one. And how does it feel? Honestly, it feels great. It feels actually quite fun because it's so small, so nimble, so light. You barely feel the weight. Now, the 10 inch wheels are a bit small for bumpy roads like we have here in Romania, in Bucharest. But honestly, with the weight of the scooter, it's not that big of an issue. You don't have to watch out for bigger craters, that's a given. But it's not that bad because it's so light. The suspension is actually pretty softly sprung. Uh, I would have liked a beefier front fork because you can actually even hear it working because the scooter is so damn quiet. But like here, bit of gravel, no problem. It has plenty of get up and go for something that's rated as a 50cc. It's definitely a lot more peppier than your regular 50cc's. This is kind of the trend with electric scooters that uh, want to mimic the 50cc class. Where the, whether they have a 3000 watt motor or a 1200 watt motor like this one does, they feel a lot more peppier than their 50cc counterparts because a 50cc you have to rev it out to 7-8 thousand rpm to get all of its 3 horsepower to get you moving anywhere plus they weigh about 110 120 kilograms this has about i don't know 1200 watts is something like two horsepower but then again it weighs almost nothing and also the way an electric motor works giving you instant torque and dead silent it really helps out the experience as you can see here on this back straight, open it up to its maximum power, we go 36, 38, 40 kilometers an hour, and relative silence, relative comfort. I don't see it going above 50 kilometers an hour, even if you de-restrict it, because this is restricted to 45 kilometers an hour. But then, but then again, what else do you need? I'm comfortable, I have plenty of leg room. I have somewhere to put my bags, I have a bit of under seat storage, I have an unrestricted view of the traffic, decent handlebars, they're decently wide, they're easy to, it makes it easy to control the scooter even on these bumpy roads. It's pretty fun to check it around in the corners. And also, if you're new to riding a two-wheeled motorized vehicle, you can also set the riding modes. Currently we have it in setting number three and this is its maximum setting. And if we give it the beans, we have pretty decent get up and go. Nothing to write home about, but it's pretty decent. But if we set it to one, let's say you're a beginner and you're terrified of this vehicle because you might fall, you, you're afraid it will get, get away from you, just set it to one and watch this. Full throttle, okay? Very, very gentle. If you want to learn, go to a parking lot and use this vehicle to learn. After it gets going, it 
picks up pretty decently but off the line it's very very gentle so it doesn't scare you there's it's basically impossible for it to get away from you set it to two this would be your economical way it gives you a bit of power but not the full power especially not off the line but i just ride it in the third setting which is which is which gives me the maximum possible power also the brakes even though we have a very small front brake disc and a drum rear brake there's not a lot of weight to stop so let's get it up to about 40 and just stomp on the brakes let's see how it does braking that's it from 40 that was like i don't know six meters seven meters the brakes are more than adequate for this class of scooter actually Considering how much it weighs, I weigh 40 kilograms more than this entire scooter. Which is amazing that I'm on a scooter and I'm the heaviest component here. Kind of makes me think I need to start losing some weight, actually. But then again, being so light, that makes it very unintimidating. You can maybe you haven't ridden in your life a scooter and you're afraid to buy one you would like one to go to work and back but you're afraid of them they're like big motorcycles you don't have any training on two-wheel vehicles you're scared of them well if you know how to ride a bicycle believe me you will be able to ride this no problem no problem whatsoever and that's about it for the review of the daytona edison 50 a 2000 a 2000 euro alternative to your ride sharing car sharing ubers whatever you use to get to work a nice little option 50 kilometers of range gets you to work gets you back home you can do a bit of grocery shopping in the evening when you come home and basically you get to work with I don't know how much the electricity would cost a couple of cents per day to get to work maybe even less you can basically consider it free transportation you just have to pay the upfront cost of 2300 euros to buy it and after that you're free to ride to get around the city for free almost for free and have quite a bit of fun in the process but thank you everyone so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care out there and ride safe. Goodbye.